about to hit, I'll run to higher ground. Cause I can see it coming now. Hey everybody, welcome, welcome. Uh, this is another episode of uh, Ham Welcomes and I have an amazing, amazing artist uh, joining me today. Super excited. Uh, she was uh, on the uh, show last year uh, when I did a, a women artist celebration, uh, but so happy to just uh, have her on to uh, talk for a bit and go through uh, all sorts of music. Um, and we've got a special field trip to do today as well. So before I say hello to everybody in chat, I do want to bring up this special guest. Uh, she is an amazing singer, an amazing songwriter. Um, I fell in love with her as an artist as soon as I saw that video, uh, Tsunami. Um, how can you not hear that song and like be happier after like listening to it? Uh, there's just so much joy and energy and it's a song about tsunami a tsunami and how you turn a tsunami song into something that's uplifting and powerful like that and 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 happy i don't know but emily gray is able to do it uh that's just how uh fantastic she is uh so let me go to the quick intro and bring her up i wonder if i wonder to my legs cut on my way just to walk alone until I finally meet my fate. Welcome, welcome, Emily. <laughs> thank you so much for having me. And thank you for saying such nice things. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Well, you, that's just the start of it. Uh, the whole show, it's just going to be nice things about you. Uh, and, uh, yeah, definitely a, a big, big fan of, uh, what you do and, uh, just in doing this show, learning new things, uh, about, uh, you know, different things that you've, you know, involved with. So I'm, I'm happy to hear about it and happy to, to share it out with everybody. So this will be a lot of fun. Um, before we get going, I do want to say hello to the chat. Uh, you're definitely welcome to say hello to, if you see any names out there, because I think there are a couple of people that are specifically here uh, because of you. I but, can't um, see the chat. Is that like, is there a way? Oh, I can you can't see it? see it? Um, okay, so yeah. Hang on, maybe, because I have my laptop here too. So I'll join on my laptop as well. Oh, and then okay. I'll see. okay. Yeah, because you definitely want to be joined in on the chat because also there uh, there's an emoji of you that. Uh, members can this? share of, of your face uh, the basically no. <laughs> <laughs> so throughout the show uh the members are able to, to put up an emoji of you so um first i saw in chat zach thong good to see you zach uh miss luck oh, no. uh, <laughs> the emoji sorry <laughs> <laughs> um and uh justine kasperick always great to see you and kirk kasperick um uh, pookie ann great to see you pookie uh the deal for real hello hello and karen risby um 
Is that, that's is, is that's he... my my partner. He's in yeah. the other room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I knew there were a couple of people here that I, I wasn't uh, familiar with. That I was like, yep. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, I also saw uh, the the artist that we're going to his channel, uh, Zip Zap Zop. Uh, he is here. Good to see you. Um, and I had reached I out to him before the show because uh, we're doing the field trip over there and he got it all set up so we can uh, have everybody come back to finish up the show. Uh, Steve-O, good to see you. Uh, songs from the Rural Room, good to see you. And let's see. I think I got everybody. If I missed you, I do apologize. Oh, there's Mateus. Hello, Mateus. Great to see you. Uh, Lexi, good to see you. Uh, it looks like that's somebody that knows you. Uh, Hi, Lexi. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Valerie Bond. Great to see you, Valerie. Um, Charlie Gabaldon, great to see you. So, yeah, all kinds of great people here. Uh, thank you all for joining us. It's going to be a super fun show. Um, and first off uh since we did play tsunami um what why don't we just talk about that one real quick just because as i said it, it's such a a uplifting and and just happy song positive song um i really love the in the darkest hour we find our superpowers i i so love that but just your energy with that song and then added with the video of seeing you and your energy just oh. makes it just <laughs> such a happy and positive song and to take a song about a tsunami <laughs> and and turn it that way i just I, i'm just curious of how you know was that your intention or is that just you know uh i guess the way things turn out with you yeah well first thank you so much um so the song is like it's about a metaphorical tsunami of like emotions mm -hmm. um and i guess it's literally about that making something good out of something that is usually bad right. um and yeah i tried to get that across in the video but actually right. filming the video was really fun you wouldn't be able to tell but it was actually kind of raining a bit mm -hmm. <laughs> um but afterwards when i was like putting the video together it was an absolute nightmare because my laptop was like <laughs> just not handling the program very well and I just remember getting really stressed out ironically because it's such a happy song right <laughs> but right. watching it back now I I don't know it makes me feel happy too <laughs> yeah it's it's such a joy it's such a joy just to hear because uh it's definitely been um uh, very much listened to on my Spotify and then and, and it just anytime I just hear it it makes me happy and then to watch the video it has that extra layer of uh, joy just in seeing you and your energy because uh, you're you just seem so bright and bubbly and and just so much fun <laughs> thank you <laughs> um and why don't you real quick though uh for people that are watching that you know don't know who you are just uh, give a little introduction uh about yourself okay so hi i'm emily gray um i am like i guess an indie alternative folk artist um and i make music about emotions but i also like to I don't know, kind of use poetry in there. And I don't know, I have lots of different projects going on. I have my band, A Thousand Clocks, which is a pop punk band. I have a covers band here in Catalonia where I live. Um, and I, what else do I have? <laughs> I have other things. I have a reggae project that I'm working on also here. Um, yeah, so I just, I just love music. I love all different right. kinds of genres. And before I forget, I should say that my boyfriend, Kieran, filmed the video for Tsunami. I think he mm. wants me to say that he did a very good job filming it. So <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Kieran. <laughs> yes, yes, Kieran, you did an outstanding job. The very, very cool video. Um, and uh, what uh, what you were saying about, uh, the, you know, bringing into the, the poetry and such, I, I feel like that uh, performance art, not just like poetry, but performance art seems to be part of what you do as well. Um, and yeah, I try to I I try to be very honest in my music and I write about emotions. So even if I for example, my EP Apocalypse is kind of like mm -hmm. it's a story. Um, but it's still at the core of it, the emotion is loneliness. 
you know so i try to make it's not just a song it's like a it's a, a piece of art <laughs> right right yeah for sure um and your latest song is parasite uh which uh again another song uh, well i guess uh, about relationships and and it still has that an empowering uh like aspect because it's you know breaking away from that toxicity uh mm -hmm. why don't you talk a little bit about uh writing that song i guess yeah so i wrote that song at a moment in my life where i just kind of felt that my trust had been completely betrayed um fun fact about parasite is that it, it actually wasn't about a relationship but <laughs> it was it, like a similar kind of situation where i kind of felt like i'd been lulled into a false sense of security and you know everything kind of flipped on its head so i i wrote parasite kind of deliberately with the idea of marketing it like it was about a relationship because i know that people will relate to that more but the the emotion there was still the same you know gotcha yeah <laughs> well why don't we go to that one right now um about uh 14 minutes or so we, we are going to go to the field trip um but uh we'll talk about that when we get back from this uh so here is parasite from emily gray you're a parasite creeping around in the night you take what you can again and again you don't care what's wrong or right you're a parasite i trusted you with every fiber in my soul the days we spent together made my broken pieces whole but slowly seasons change you rearrange priorities and with each passing day you sucked the life right out of me cause you're a parasite Take what you can again and again You don't care if it's wrong or right You're a You never cared for me at all Flashbacks to your fingertips Makes my sore skin So good yeah i um 
I, I, I'll be honest, every single one of your originals I absolutely love. Um, and they're all kind of unique in their own way. Um, but uh, such a, a great way, I feel like, connecting uh, the emotional um, uh, quality that you're trying to get across. So Thank uh, you. So good. Um, don't know if you saw this in chat, but the Rua Room uh, said, I would love to play a song of Emily on my Monday night show. So, um, oh, amazing. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Um, definitely spread, um, you know, uh, the music around. Um, I uh, remember when I first, uh, I, I think it was, I, I just stumbled across that song. Um, I don't remember if it was Spotify first or if I found you on YouTube, but ever since then, I, I've been a, a really big fan and I'm, I'm excited anytime that you're going to release something new. So, oh, thank um, you. <laughs> and the, the song that we are going to field trip to uh, here shortly popped up on my release radar on, on Spotify. I, I wasn't even paying any attention. And it's so different than the, what I'm used to. And it, it didn't even connect with me that it was you because I was like, what is this? This is, it, it, I'm getting like these Bjork vibes. I'm getting these Grimes vibes. It's this very like, you know, um, kind of out there, uh, very, uh, again, very, very kind of uh, art. And um, it just, it was, was that one, uh, talk a bit about it. Was it, a, was it poetry first or, or what was the process of it? Okay, so it's actually, you know, my song Killing Time. I don't know if you've heard mm -hmm. that one. Oh, yeah. So um, Zip Zap Zop, who's like the the producer, I guess, behind Echoes of the Eternal Self, he right. sent me a message and he said that he'd love to do something with the vocal mm -hmm. stems from Killing Time. So I, yeah. all I did was send the vocal stems. That's all ah. I did. <laughs> <laughs> and then Zip Zap Zop had the amazing idea to mash killing time up with one of terrestrial animals songs so it's mm. actually kind of two songs mashed up together and then remixed to make like this amazing like trippy out of world experience yeah no it's it's fantastic <laughs> um you know that's the thing is that i i i i've realized with your songs that there's kind of some things that uh, like themes and such that kind of repeat but i didn't even realize that it was actually the same song because <laughs> it yeah. sounds so differently it's it's so different so but yeah, no, fantastic. Um, your music in general, though, your originals. Do you do you start with lyrics? Do you start with poetry, or or what's your process? So generally, I start with lyrics. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there are a few songs I've written where like they actually started out as a poem because mm -hmm. back when I was like more disciplined than I am now, <laughs> I used to write every single day. So I set aside right. time in my day, and I'd write something. Um, so then if I was feeling uninspired, I could go back and look at the writing that I'd done and then maybe right. make something from that. Um, but now, yeah, it's usually lyrics first. But once I have the lyrics, a melody kind of comes to me and then like the rest of it sort of writes itself. It's really weird. <laughs> right. Gotcha. And when did you first get started as far as singing? Because I, I know you've been in bands since like high school. Uh, so when did you first, you know, get into singing? um well high school really okay. i was in a band so one of the songs we're going to listen to today actually is by the missing piece and we don't really exist anymore right. um but that was like the the first band that i was in so it was my guitarist ryan and me on vocals and it was just mm. like this little acoustic band and sort of evolved to be something more because i think ryan continued down the path of music as well and he's right. quite a talented producer and writer right. so we sort of rekindled um online and made the newer music that you're going to hear today but i think i was maybe about 14 the first time i started singing in a band and like performing live and luckily um ryan's parents had a pub so we used to just play gigs in their pub so it was it was right. obviously like just great experience starting out you know right yeah and it, so before that, though, was there like any ambition to, hey, I want to sing or did you uh, did you, you know, sing at home or anything like that? Or it was just. Yeah, um, I used to I when I was young, I remember like writing songs and performing them to okay. my <laughs> to my family. Um, I played guitar for 
like a while. I mean, it took me many years to actually get decent at it. And even now right. I wouldn't necessarily say that I'm good, but I played guitar from maybe about the age of like 10 or something. Mm. Um, and I remember like the first time I ever performed on stage was in year seven. And it was, um, you're the one that I want from Greece. <laughs> <laughs> nice nice and it was probably terrible but the rush you know i was like i want to do this again <laughs> <laughs> yeah well and you know olivia newton john that's a that's a great one to start with so uh. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't just me it was me and um i can't remember now like four right. other th other friends maybe right. and we had like this dance and everything it was you know amazing i'm sure <laughs> Um, and what, one thing that in, in doing this show, I, I was, uh, just looking at all your different, uh, sites and stuff. And I didn't know this, but there was actually a couple of, uh, different competitions that you won in 2019 and then also 2020. Uh, yeah. so why don't you tell us a little bit about those? Yeah. So I'm not sure if the second one was 2020 or 2021, but I mean, like it's all, it's all in the right. past. So the same thing, <laughs> but, um, 2019 was the voice of Suffolk. So that was just before I moved to Spain mm -hmm. and it was like a karaoke competition, but with like kind of various rounds, you know, like the beginning was um, like karaoke in a lot of different pubs in the area. Mm -hmm. And then certain people got through and then there was like a semi-final, a quarter final, a semi-final and a final. Mm -hmm. And it was, um, it was good fun. There's there's like a whole story behind it where I almost didn't even get into the, um, I think it was the final. I almost didn't get in. And uh, my my name was actually picked out of a hat as the, like the, the joker oh. who went into the final. <laughs> wow. <laughs> um, yeah. 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 It was, it was crazy. And then I, I couldn't believe that I won it. But luckily, right. we were literally about to move to Spain like a week after or something. And we didn't really have any money. <laughs> and mm. the, the prize was a thousand pounds. Oh, nice. It really helped me out. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Especially the fact that uh, you were just like one of the randoms that uh, ended up actually being in it and then to win it. So, oh. yeah. It, that's one of those things that kind of really just makes you think, hey, things things happen because they're meant to happen, especially yeah. winning the money and everything. Definitely. So. I mean, I was almost not going to go as well. Yeah. So not only did I, I decided I wasn't going to go and do it because basically right. some other girl chose the song that I was doing and I didn't ah. like the song. It was out of my range and I didn't want to embarrass myself. And then the organizer of the competition like phoned me and he was like, oh, were you coming tonight? And I was like, well, nah, I don't, I don't really feel like it. And he was right. like, you should come. You never know what's going to happen. So then I came and then right. I lost and then I went through anyway. And, and then I won, <laughs> you know? <laughs> well, we are almost 60 seconds to the world premiere. Um, there might be a little countdown, but I want to make sure everybody starts getting over to the world premiere. Uh, so the, the link is uh, pinned at the top of the chat, but I just dropped it again. Uh, so everybody uh, in my chat, go over, because uh, we're going to watch the, the world premiere of this uh, Echoes of the Eternal Self. You don't want to miss this. This is an amazing, amazing song. Um, it's uh, uh, Terrestrial Animal, Emily Gray, and Zip Zap Zop. Uh, and uh, it is so, so cool. Uh, so everybody make sure you get over there because I'm going to go to the field trip song uh, once this uh, starts up and then we'll be back after that. Um, I am planning to play this video at the very end of the show though. Um, so let's see. I see Pookie Ann over there. I see a couple of people. So everybody get over there. We are about to start. Yeah. <laughs> so what I will do is I am going to go ahead and um, uh, put up the banner for this. And I'm going to go ahead and go to the uh, field trip song. And again, um, Emily, if you do have to jump out of StreamYard because uh, the, the field trip song will just be going the whole time. But um, okay. I will be over in the chat at the world premiere. So here we go with the field trip song. Let's go for a field trip. 
mission has gone inside. Let's go for a field trip. You promise you'll have a nice time. This talented artist will amaze you, and you'll hear your new favorite song. So please do come and join us. Don't you know we can do what you love? Let's go for a field trip. Yeah.
you come and join us? Don't you wanna be cool and be lost? Let's go for a field trip. Let's go for a field trip. Permission for all and been signed. Let's go for a field trip. You promise you'll have a nice time. This talented artist will amaze you, and you'll hear your new favorite song. So please do come and join us. Don't you wanna be cool and be lost? Let's go for a field trip. Let's go for a field trip. Permission for all has been signed. Let's go for a field trip. You promise you'll have a nice time. This talented artist will amaze you, and you'll hear your new favorite song. So please do come and join us. Don't you wanna be cool and be lost? Let's go for a field trip. Let's go for a field trip. Permission for all has been signed. Let's go for a field trip. We promise you'll have a nice time. This talented artist will amaze you, and you'll hear your new favorite song. So please do come and join us. Don't you wanna be cool and be lost? Let's go for a field trip. Let's go for a field trip. Permission for all has been signed. Let's go for a field trip. We promise you'll have a nice time. This talented artist will amaze you, and you'll hear your new favorite song. So please do come and join us. Don't you wanna be cool and be lost? Let's go for a field trip. Let's go for a field trip. Permission for all has been signed. Let's go for a field trip. We promise you'll have a nice time. This talented artist will amaze you, and you'll hear your new favorite song. So please do come and join us. Don't you wanna be cool and be lost? Let's go for a field trip. Let's go for a field trip. Permission for all has been signed. Let's go for a field trip. We promise you'll have a nice time. This talented artist will amaze you, and you'll hear your new favorite song. So please do come and join us. Don't you wanna be cool and be lost? Let's go for a field trip. Let's go for a field trip. Permission for all has been signed. Let's go for a field trip. We promise you'll have a nice time. This talented artist will amaze you, and you'll hear your new favorite song. So please do come and join us. Don't you wanna be cool and be lost? Let's go for a field trip. <laughs> oh wait, I uh, do I have you turned down? Chad, your mic is off, I think. Oh, there we go. Okay. <laughs> All right. Like... <laughs> yeah. We'll get back to normal here shortly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so looks like everybody's coming back. Uh, so again, so that so that that that's the really cool thing about that. Um, if any of you haven't heard Killing Time, uh, we're not going to get to that today. But 
definitely look it up on Spotify, any of the streaming platforms, and also on YouTube. Uh, and then I, I'm going to have to go and listen to them uh, side by side uh, or one <laughs> after the other because uh, I did not even catch that. <laughs> but uh, very, very cool. Um, what we were going to do next is actually go into um, your current virtual band uh, that you're involved with uh, that you did uh, mention already, A Thousand Clocks. Um, uh, first of all, uh, how, how did that, I guess, project come about? So we just kind of met on the internet and um, Harvey was looking for a singer mm -hmm. and I was just kind of available, kind of looking to do collaborations and branch right. out. And um, I was going to say kind of growing up, I always loved like alternative and pop punk music, but mm -hmm. not even really growing up. I think I still love it, right. <laughs> you know? So yeah. it was just a real a real treat to be involved in something like that. Um, and we released our first album like a little while ago. We've actually finished working on the second and we're working on the third, but we're slowly releasing the second now. Awesome. Very cool. Yeah. Um, and this one, uh, Picture Perfect, uh, that we're going to go to, uh, any certain thing uh, you want to say about it before we play it? Yeah, so this one is, um, I don't know, it's about like comparing yourself to everyone that you see around you and kind of specifically the, the stuff that you see on the internet and just how it feels to, I guess, feel like ugly. But the the main message of the song is like learning how to love and accept yourself as like right. a lot of my music is. Right, um, right. And the fun fact with this video actually is that me and Harvey got to meet in real life because his his day job he's like a, a video games art director and he has to travel around a lot for his job he lives in the philippines right. um but he actually traveled to barcelona for his job so we got to meet in barcelona and shoot this video together so it was yeah this one's really special to me yeah oh, yeah no that's really cool um all right well here is a thousand clocks uh featuring uh emily gray and this is a uh, picture perfect and yeah i really dig this song i think everybody's gonna like it uh, and here we go <laughs> Desperately 
such a great song. Um, and like you said, it, it, it's cool because he, here's the thing. I feel like that almost everything that you do, it kind of has a little bit of that uh, punk element to it. But with this, you, you get to let it shine a little bit more. So very cool. <laughs> yeah, that's very true. I think that my, my vocals just kind of have that quality to them, even acoustically. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, and we were going to talk about... Uh, influences and um you know i think it's it's really great because these days there are so many uh, artists with a mass appeal that kind of bend all sorts of genres and don't kind of see themselves boxed into you know one type of music and 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 that's really helped open up the indie artist world to or at least acceptance for any artist at any level basically to do whatever they want and to a kind of experiment and I, I think that's great that you definitely show um a range from you can be kind of you know folky and you can be you know alternative or you can be punk or you can be pop or you can be rock um and i love that uh, about uh you as an artist and in looking at your influences there's definitely a uh <laughs> you know a bit of a uh that and also the performance art element as well um so you had said that currently ren is one of uh i guess your favorites as far as artists that are uh out there i definitely see the uh uh you know the the influence in what you do uh specifically with uh, apocalypse um but uh yeah um what what is it about ren as an artist for you that you know um, makes you such a fan so it's interesting because he's got like two completely different sides to his like musical persona. Right. Um, he's got like this kind of rap god persona mm. where like he, he's very good at rapping, but right. it's kind of a, a less serious side where he just has a bit of fun. And then he's got the kind of side where he gets kind of emotional and talks about like dark things. Um, and he also kind of does like a, uh, storytelling with just his like um acoustic like spanish guitar and that's that's the side of ren that influences me more than anything um he has like a series of songs which are like the tale of jenny and screech and it's just a story told over three different songs and it's, i don't know it's just amazing the way he does it with like poetry with the guitar as an accompaniment it's like a it's almost like watching a play. If you watch his videos, he right. acts as he performs and it's right. just, it's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. No. And, and that's, I, I get a, a, some of that with, with yours, uh, like I said, definitely with the apocalypse. Uh, but uh, I think in, in general, I see that kind of uh, uh, influence, like I said, performance art uh, very much, but uh uh, you absolutely blow away this cover. Uh, it's a, a Ren and a Chinchilla uh, cover, uh, a Chalk Outline, and wow, <laughs> I'm so impressed with this cover. Um, is is that uh, one of the the songs of Ren's that you're a, a big fan of, and you know just had to cover? Yeah, I think I remember that like the day it came out, I immediately scrambled to like listen to it, you know, and just right. fell in love with it and covered it more or less immediately. Right. And I guess I was lucky because that song was kind of as, as Ren was like on his way up. So right. because I did the cover kind of at the right time, and I guess it's not mm -hmm. like a terrible cover. Um, people, people were a bit interested in it. So I think it's my most viewed video on YouTube as well. <laughs> yeah, I, no I, I noticed that. Yeah, yeah. Um... But yeah, no, you 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 absolutely do an amazing job with it. You really do. Uh, we're gonna go to that real quick. I do want to make sure I catch up with the chat. Uh, thank you, Paul uh, Wobbly Ashtray Records, uh, with the super sticker there. Thank you very very much. Um, and I wanted to say hello. I know some people snuck in from the field trip. Uh, Anti At Jack, good to see you. Uh, Mike Herrera, great to see you. Uh, Camellia, good to see you. Uh, Platy, good to see you. Uh, I think I caught everybody. If I missed anybody, it's not on purpose. Um, but uh, yeah, so I, again, amazing, amazing cover. Uh, chalk outlines. We're going to go to that right now. Um, just, yeah, 
so good. So here we go. I'm still here in this bed that I crawled in. I hope that I'm someone else in the morning. Sit down and you'll be fine. Then walk around in a floating chalk outline. And so it goes, let it be in the gallows. I'm balanced on my toes so I can breathe. Little by little, bit by bit, I push it back down with a new habit. If not for long, just for a while, I'll bury myself with a great big smile. Oh my my, oh my my, we trace ourselves with these chalk outlines. so good ah love that <laughs> thank you um, and when when you do a cover like that do you uh, do you basically do a like perform it through and then add in like the harmonies and all of that after the fact yeah i mean i don't really do it anymore for that reason because mm. it was so time consuming not only having gotcha. to kind of learn the whole song all the chords and all the lyrics right. But also get the performance like more or less exactly perfect i mean if there's the odd bit that doesn't sound right i can kind of change that afterwards right. but for the most part like <laughs> yeah having to remember everything was um difficult i remember that one being a challenge specifically as well 
but I, I did it and it was worth it. So. <laughs> right. And um, you had mentioned you uh, do uh, gigs. Uh, is it mostly covers that you do with uh, the band that you uh, perform with? Yeah, so we, we are just a covers band at the moment. I, I mean, they have said that they want to kind of accompany me with my original right. songs. So hopefully that will happen at some point. But right. for now, like in terms of going and playing a gig and having right. the audience enjoy themselves, it's it's right. best to do covers. People right. want to hear what they've always heard. <laughs> right, right. Well, I mean, well, and that's the thing. Are, are you doing covers like that or is it mostly just the uh, the more you know, known artists like Avril and Pink and, and stuff like that? Well, it's actually more like 80s and 90s kind of ah, rock, pop gotcha. punk um, with, you know, we, we used to do ABBA. Um, we do like Metallica and Aerosmith, but we also do some Green Day. Like we do uh, a wide variety. We do some gotcha. uh, No Doubt. <laughs> right. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean... It, again um just shows all the the the, the different directions that you're uh, performing and and uh doing music so i like that uh so so rounded in so many different uh, ways uh Thank super you. cool um and yeah um uh paul o'farrell uh who is a fantastic musician was talking about how great the production is on that that that's the thing on your 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 covers uh on your youtube there there is such a, a nice production um not only just fantastic performances but also just the production of them is really great like you said it's very time consuming so um i guess uh you haven't been because it looks like you were doing those quite a bit like pretty regularly but uh yeah. too busy in different other directions to focus on that it seems like yeah i mean i i think i was doing them every week for ages and right. i i love doing them i i right. think it's really really fun but yeah. the thing is when i've got you know i've got the band and i've got the reggae thing and then i've got the other band and then i've right. got my music and i need to write the songs and record the songs and there's just so much you know if i've got a gig i've got to practice for the gig and i have to find yeah. time to like exist in between all that right. so I think as <laughs> yeah. as it kind of i don't know i branched out with things the workload got bigger and mm. i realized that like i really enjoyed doing youtube but it wasn't like there wasn't much coming back from it you know right. so i kind of focused more on like instagram and tiktok um yeah. like it's it's not about the numbers but also back then i i was literally getting like 50 views and i was putting in like hours and hours of work right. and it yeah. just you know <laughs> yeah yeah that, that that's funny because i was going to ask you about that because i know you do uh tiktok and instagram and you've uh, feel like you get a little bit more i guess traction with the those as opposed to uh, the youtube stuff yeah I, I think they all work together is right. what i've noticed that you as a musician who like if you want to grow and build your music career you kind of have to do like all of it right. <laughs> um, right. but there's like a balance between it all and if you're smart about it you can take people from one place and lead them to another place you know but right. it's i think learning how to do social media is such a big part of like if you want to be an indie musician who has a fan base and a following, right. you have to learn how to leverage social media to do that. Right. Yeah. No. And and that's the thing is that there, there are some artists who they'll do one thing and then they think that somehow they're going to grow and, and you're not going to, unless you are doing, you know, as much as you can. <laughs> so. Yeah. It's horrible. I hate it. I wish I could spend more time <laughs> just doing the music, but I guess you have to view the social media side of it as art as well like if you make mm -hmm. a 10 second video for tiktok try and put your personality into it you know like yeah. try and think creatively about it yeah. um because if you it, it can just be really soul destroying <laughs> if you yeah. don't try and enjoy yourself while you do it you know right what, what i've always uh, seen social media as and how i always try to explain it to people is that um it social media is storytelling and it's a tool for you to tell whatever story it is that you're wanting to tell, whether mm -hmm. it's one individual telling, you know, the world 
the story about themselves or if it's a product or if it's you know um, music art whatever and and use it to tell that story and so um i think um like you said just kind of uh using all of it to kind of uh, it, that's the thing there's not one thing you can do and focus on and only do that you kind of just go at wherever your audience is find that out and go there and then try to bring them wherever it is you need them to be whether it be you know spotify whether it be bandcamp or youtube or or whatever so mm -hmm. but yeah um so i got the list here of the favorites and influences of course we got ren on here uh freddie mercury which is another one uh, uh performance art that um i i think that that's definitely something that um uh you know appeals to you and also something that you yourself uh you know carry on as an artist uh theatrics i guess um mm -hmm. but then um as, as far as any of these other artists of uh, you know uh is there any uh certain uh you know uh, thing as far as them as an artist that appeals to you and that you feel um you know makes them a favorite of yours or you know influential in some way yeah so i would say for me out, out of the list that i i chose like i never really considered myself to be like my music to be particularly influenced mm -hmm. by someone else's music right. you know i don't write a song thinking like i want it to sound like this person right right but when i was growing up um i remember like watching pink on tv right. and how she was just like completely different to everyone else mm -hmm. you know she she started off with that kind of r b vibe and yeah. her song don't let me get me i just remember absolutely loving that song um sort of about how she wasn't the same as other female artists and she was mm -hmm. told that she had to look a certain way or behave a certain way and then she she had so many other songs that were the kind of similar vibe stupid girls right. i don't know if you remember that one. Oh yeah yeah no i but i've <laughs> i've always been a fan of pink as well and it was it was really fun to see how she came out as like this yeah. r&b artist and then like didn't hold to that and again that's what i'm talking about is these these mass artists you know these artists with mass appeal that that aren't letting like one type of music um uh, yeah. you know be, make be you know make sure that they're not pigeonholed to that one thing and always having to do that one thing uh gwen yeah. stefani same way um she's a you know another one and uh that's what i think th there's very much kind of a theme with a lot of these i mean avril um uh, you know mm -hmm. from uh pop to punk to you know big ballads uh yeah but, uh yeah um I, I you're absolutely right though about uh pink uh, she's definitely uh one of those though that really um it just seems like that she does what she wants to do mm -hmm. and she doesn't care <laughs> yeah you know? and she's so like physically and mentally strong as well like right. i've never seen her live i would love to but i've heard she does some like crazy kind of acrobatics and stuff oh, on yeah. stage. You yeah. know? i hadn't and seen I her either like... but yeah i i I've, I've seen her do perform you know on youtube mm -hmm. and on tv and such and yeah she seems like she's so um into the artistry of uh what she's doing yeah i saw a video on social media of um i can't, I can't remember the context but basically she had like some dude like standing on her chest mm -hmm. and she was like this is the reason i can sing and do all the things i can do on stage and then she was like belting out her vocals and they sounded perfect and there was just <laughs> literally a man standing on her and it was like what <laughs> yeah <laughs> well we we are going to get back to some of these others uh but right now we are going to go to a uh cover of a pink song and uh this is one that you've been um uh, i guess covering for some time yeah i used to cover this one with my band the the missing piece the one i told you about when i was um in high school right, <laughs> right. yeah and this is another one you just absolutely kill this uh cover so so good um you know it's a it's a fantastic song and then uh you so do it justice so we're gonna go to perfect right now uh performed by emily gray made a wrong turn once or twice dug my way out blood fire 
decisions That's alright Welcome to my eyes, silly lie Mistreated, misplaced, misunderstood Miss, no it is all good It didn't slow me down Mistaken, always second guessing Underestimated, look I'm still around Pretty, pretty please So mean when you talk about yourself, you are change the voices in your head, in your make them like you instead. So complicated, look happy you make it, filled with so much hatred, such a time. So I swallow the fear The only thing I should be drinking Is an ice cold beer To cool in line We try, try, try But we try too hard It's a waste of my time Done looking for the critics They're everywhere They don't like my jeans They don't get my hair Strange ourselves We do it all the time And why do I do that? Why do I do that? Why do I do that? Great song and uh, great cover. Um, and that's what I, I love about um, your covers is uh, I can definitely feel the emotion and, and feel that you feel the emotion um, and uh, like just cover them almost as if you wrote them and you're, you're, you're saying your own words. Um, so Thank they you. definitely have a lot of power to them. So, um, so good. Um, and going back to that list of influences, so Haley Williams is one that I know that, uh, when you were on last time, some people had, uh, said that you, uh, reminded them of her, um, uh, and, uh, <laughs> I, I, uh, that one was not a surprise at all. And Avril was not a surprise at all, uh, cause, uh, Avril's one that I've always been a huge fan of since uh, she first started. And she just has this, this attitude and this spark about her. And that I, I kind of see a little bit of that same kind of spark in you, that energy, that just that, you know, um, it, it, it's kind of a little attitude. It's not, you, you aren't as snarky as she is and yours are more on the joyful side, but I definitely, I feel that energy. Thank you. I'll, I'll yeah. take it as a compliment. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> yeah. Um, and Avril is one that uh, she, she would be, uh, up there as far as like favorites of mine, but I haven't seen her in concert, uh, either, but, uh, and they just came out with Funko pops, uh, and I've already pre-ordered my Avril Funko pop, <laughs> oh. <laughs> but, uh, what, what is it about Avril that, uh, you know, you connect with? Well, I just, I remember growing up listening to her music and just, just absolutely loving it. Um, she kind of toes that line perfectly between like pop, but like alternative. And mm -hmm. she, I don't know, she was just so influential back when I was like, I guess a child. Um, and I really looked up to her and I think that yeah. her style like influenced a lot of my music taste kind of going forward after that as well. Right. Yeah. No, I, th I think she's been a, a, a really great influence um, in a lot of ways. You know, there 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 are a lot of memes and a lot of making fun, um, and uh, that uh, some people I, I, I think that Avril, you know, started uh, punk music and started skateboarding and all of these silly things. Uh, but it, in in it, you know, it's it's people that take themselves too serious that are into punk or into skateboarding and, mm -hmm. and can't see the the positive that she did in bringing um, a lot of those, uh, you know, aspects of the culture more to a widespread audience and, um, you know, introducing uh, people to uh these uh, you know she's definitely on that on that borderline of pop punk and more so on the pop side but she opened that door up to a lot of people who may have gotten more into the you know the uh more specific punk stuff or into skateboarding and, and whatever but um i it just uh, it, it it's funny but then at the same time it's it's annoying <laughs> yeah <laughs> but no, I understand, but like Skater Boy was was iconic. I don't care what anyone yeah. says; it was oh, iconic. Oh yeah, yeah, no, no, no. It, it it definitely is, and you know, and and she's one of those that uh started you know young, and to see her m mature and her music mature, and then like I, her last album is absolutely amazing. Um, I'm still just a big fan of Avril. I feel like she just gets better and better as she goes. Um, but uh. What about uh, Christina Aguilera? Of course, another just amazing artist, amazing vocalist. And, you know, she uh, definitely dabbles in all sorts of different uh, genres within uh, pop itself. Um, uh, it seems like that, that being able to kind of uh, bounce around and not be tied to one genre seems uh, to be a big uh theme here through all of these <laughs> yeah i mean and also a lot of them was kind of the music that i was listening to growing up because i don't know what happened like at a certain point i kind of got stuck and i just i listened to the same old stuff <laughs> it's really bad it's, it's quite rare that i find a new <laughs> artist and i get completely obsessed with a new artist but i guess i'm so busy like making music that yeah. unfortunately i don't have a lot of time to consume it you know yeah. um but christina aguilera was another one of those ones that i saw on tv a lot i think for her spe specifically is her her vocal technique oh, man yeah. is is just insane i think she's one of yeah. the best singers that has, oh, has for ever sure. existed. <laughs> for sure for sure no she is um vocally just can't can't be beat uh, and um, she can really sing anything she wants. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, she really could. Um, and then uh, Amy Lee, of course, another just oh, amazing uh, vocalist. Uh, and the fact that she, you know, um, was involved with new metal and really had a, a big part of showing that, um, you know, women could front you know, mm -hmm. a, a metal band and um, it, that opened up a lot of doors to a lot of bands afterwards that are now, you know, uh, fronted by women. Yeah. And especially because she had that kind of operatic vibe to her mm -hmm. voice. It was like kind of a mix of two genres that, that hadn't really been put together before. Oh, yeah. And it was very yeah. special. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, with with her, um, what I because a lot of people, some people don't consider uh, Evanescence 
uh, new metal and some people do and the way i explain it is that basically they are new metal she what they did is they took they took metal and they blended it with gothic and then like you're saying like mm -hmm. this kind of operatic aspect and they took it in that direction as opposed mm -hmm. to taking it into like a rap direction or uh you know whatever industrial uh you know there's all sorts of different types with new metal and they just took it into that more like gothic uh type route but um we are going to go to this cover of an Avril song. Um, I'm with you. Uh, one of her, you know, definite, uh, I'd say top five uh, songs for me. And uh, another fantastic cover here. Uh, we are going to get into your uh, uh, little, I, I mean, it's almost like a, a short play uh in a way because uh, <laughs> apocalypse we're gonna get into that uh after this one but um here is a uh, i'm with you a fantastic uh cover from emily green i'm standing on a bridge i'm waiting in the dark i thought that you'd be here by now There's nothing but the rain My footsteps on the ground I'm listening but there's no sound Isn't anyone trying to find me? Or won't somebody come take me home? It's a so good um since it was brought up in the chat yes see we're mostly focusing on uh her favorite women and uh, uh 
in, influencers that are women, uh, because it is Women's History Month. Uh, when I first asked uh, Emily about her uh, favorites and influences, um, it, I said women artists, and she was like, "Well, I mostly listen to men artists." <laughs> And so I specifically wanted to put the spotlight on uh, women artists because it is Women's History Month. Um, but uh, yeah, of that list, uh, we had to include Wren because that's her, her, her favorite uh, right now. And Freddie Mercury um, has just been a, a big influence as well. So, um, you know, um, I didn't want to make it uh, like we were just talking about uh, women. We can also discuss... Uh, you know, men artists as well. In fact, we got another cover coming up later uh, from uh, Bo Burnham, uh, <laughs> which uh, I was not familiar with that song, but a really fantastic job with that cover. Um, Thank but you. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll get to that one shortly. Um, right now, we uh, are going to go into the uh, epic. Um, EP that you did, that you then did a, uh, a video uh, of all of the, the different pieces um, all together. Uh, talk a little bit about that project and, and what was it that, I guess, sparked the idea and, and how did it all come about? Yeah, so this one, I, I don't even know what happened, honestly. Like one day I had writer's block. And then I just Googled like writing prompts. And the first <laughs> writing prompt was like, imagine that you are the only survivor of the apocalypse mm. and then like and then i just wrote a whole ep from that prompt like i don't know <laughs> i i wrote like a poem that turned out to be a song and then you know i was just kind of going about my my daily existence and i kept thinking about it and how some of the lines that were in the poem were for me like some of the best lines that i'd ever written and how it felt like the beginning of a story and then First, I got really overly excited, and I was like, "I'm going to write a musical." And then I was like, "Well, maybe, maybe I shouldn't write a musical. <laughs> like, maybe that's not really a a realistic goal to have right now." So then I I just wrote I wrote Apocalypse. <laughs> right. Yeah. No. And what's funny is because um, the uh, the the first one of the um, you know the, I, what do you call these? Because they're not really songs. They're I, I know you've got I a guess number. Chapters, maybe we chapters? Can call them chapters. Okay. <laughs> so, so the first one, shock. I, I yeah. don't know what it is. I absolutely love that one, and I wish that that was a full song. <laughs> but, because <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I use that as your intro on the show mm -hmm. today, and then I, I actually used it the last time. <laughs> There's just something about that that I just love so much. But um, it's a fantastic journey, though. This whole. Uh, um, apocalypse and i love the fact that uh you you because to me if if you're on spotify unless you're specifically listening to it things will mm. pop up and like you'll be listening to another song of yours and then a peaceful of this will pop up and it it, it just doesn't work yeah. the way it does as a whole you know so it doesn't um, really make sense if you hear yeah. like one random song it, right yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah no it, it it is so great though and it's 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 funny that it just kind of started off as is like a an exercise to to get over writer's block uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it just completely unblocked me to the point where I, I wrote like the biggest thing I'd ever written. <laughs> right. Well, everybody, you are in for a treat. This is a uh, apocalypse. Um, it's uh, all the chapters, uh, and it, it's all labeled as it goes along. But it, it, it is so so good. Uh, and this so, one's actually a live performance as well. I just want to throw that one in there. Yeah. Yeah. So and, and this is all just straight through that you did it or uh no, I did one song at a time and then obviously okay, added the you. harmonies and stuff in afterwards. But like right. it's surprisingly difficult to play those guitar parts and speak at the same time. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. No, I, I, I imagine so. But uh yeah, so so good. So we're gonna go to that right now. Here is Apocalypse. Am I all alone? In this place we called our home With nothing but the stench of death and skeletons that once took breaths I realise There's no one left 
Hot to dinner, apple breathing clouds of poison dust. I watch the buildings crumble as the months and years crawl past. I haven't seen the sun since the explosion scorched the skies. The blinding flash of sudden death still burn into my eyes. And so I wander aimlessly, searching for signs of life. Memories of what used to be still haunt my dreams at night. I wonder if I wonder till my legs can't hold my weight. Curse to walk alone until I finally meet my fate. Time stretches endlessly in front of me. No familiar face to comfort me. Drenched in the sweat of regret, I'm afraid I'll forget. So I obsess over things I should have done differently, everything I should have changed. Grappling with my anxiety, alcohol to numb the pain. In a world that never noticed me, every day passed just the same. Hypnotized by the monotony, we were all partly to blame. Everybody was too lost to see We were running into flames And now it's too late We missed our chance There's no one left to fight It's too fitful sleep to the sound of my heartbeat. Another empty day of weary wandering awaits. My bones ache and I curse fate for leaving me this way. Still, I haul my weakened frame up from the ground. I look around. The gloomy light illuminates the broken town. I've lost track of all the time I've spent Searching for your ghosts I've forgotten how the music went To all the songs we used to know So long ago Oh So long ago So I'll keep the rhythm with my feet and hold on tight to that I'm not walking here alone oh please don't let me be alone wait is this the sign that I've been searching for the familiar smell of smoke a single pair of dusty footprints stamped into the road Is this the sign that I've been hoping for A small glimmer of hope That I'm not walking here alone Baby, I'm not walking here Dusty footprints etched into the road A lonely soul marching on Could be friend or foe But if I don't go 
I'll never know. And so I continue on my journey through the withered wasteland. Exhausted, starving, thirsty, with no specific plan. This stranger will be my saviour. I can feel it. I can. Carried on the stale breeze. A rhythmic thud makes me freeze. So here we have the moment of truth. A physical sign. Tangible proof. Maybe chopping up firewood or building a Right up ahead, the footprints have stopped. I fall to my knees, my head in my hand as I read the note scratched into the sand. body that hangs from the tree, smashing into the trunk as it swings in the breeze. I'm too late, I missed my chance, they've given up the fight. I'm too late, I've sealed my fate, it's too Now I've reached the precipice, my legs can't hold my weight I stop walking alone, and I accept my fate So good Thank you. <laughs> even yeah. like, even now watching that, I'm still like, oh. <laughs> yeah, it, it's it's very much it's kind of like a you know a, a nine minute one person play. Uh, it's really really cool. Um, Thank such you. a such a range of uh, emotions and 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 different styles. Uh, so cool. Um, and uh, I saw that the Dill for Real was definitely uh, digging it. Um, and, uh, Ray was saying it, it, it gave him Scotland and Ireland vibes. Uh, so, uh, Scottish Viking style, he said. <laughs> Amazing. Well, thank you. If, if you enjoyed it, I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah. No, it's, 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 it's so very cool. And, and again, it, it comes back to that, like, you know, it's a, it's a work of art and, and not just a, a, a song or uh, anything. It's like bigger than that so thank um, you right really my cool. next release is gonna have kind of a similar vibe um 
it's well it's actually a song that's about a battery hen like from the perspective as though the battery hen were a person so <laughs> i think it's going to possibly be a little bit controversial but the idea kind of came to me and it's that that style it's got like spoken word poetry in it and right. the music kind of reflects the the action of the story so i'm really excited to release that one cool cool yeah, no, I I I, I love uh, that uh, different element within music, and um, I'm I'm happy to see more of that, uh, you know, out there uh, in the world. Uh, and like I said, somebody like Ren, I think, is definitely helping opening that up to the masses of people accepting it, and 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 not being like. Oh, what is this? This is too weird. It's kind of yeah. like opening uh, people up to it. So, but um, and another artist that is definitely uh, into uh, the whole theatrics and performance art, uh, Bo Burnham. <laughs> he he's one that uh, definitely is uh, an influence on uh, you as well. Uh, the the chicken, so the chicken of all songs, the chicken. <laughs> And no, honestly, I it's so emotional. I remember like the the opening lyric was like the chicken wakes up like she does every morning mm -hmm. to the sound of her husband's screams. Like mm -hmm. of course she does and it's right. just so funny, but if you listen to the song, right. it's like this really beautiful emotional story about the chicken right. like wanting a better life for herself and oh. right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah no the the that's that's the other great thing is like the which you were just talking about uh your next song the the like forcing yeah. the audience into this perspective that they normally would not have uh you know thought of uh and so yeah no i i i really think that's cool that's that's like bringing to music what um you know like techniques that you know some filmmakers use you know um and I, I i i think it adds a new layer to where you can take music and what you can do with it so but uh yeah no it's a fantastic uh, cover of the chicken it really is so we're gonna go to that one next um so good uh so here is the chicken a cover of the bo burnham song uh by emily gray <laughs> like she does every morning to the sound of her husband screams sits in the dark on the egg she is warming she closes her eyes and dreams of walking to memphis becoming a dentist anything but she likes her life as a mother and wife but is that all she is she stares out the window the very next morning the chicken decides to make her escape get a taste of freedom she runs out the coop that her life's been confined to suddenly sees things that she only dreamed of and just up ahead gophers run through a meadow dear grace but sing her future is waiting right there for the taking there's Chicken must first cross the road, the road. Sea of trees and green and moss waiting just to cross the road.
one's guess what happens next but most say she died but i think we ought to believe that she got to the other side and that's why she my face at the end yes <laughs> but the whole thing the whole song is like mm. you know the the joke like why did the chicken cross the mm. road right and she, you know that's why she did it to to right. find a better life for herself like right yeah <laughs> no it, it it's definitely uh it's it, it's it's one of those things where it's like on one level it's it's basically a joke and then on the other yeah. level it's like yeah like you said there's this this heartfelt meaning uh to it um definitely the way you uh deliver it uh it, it gives it so much uh soul and emotion so uh, it's fantastic but you're right the whole thing is just it is a joke <laughs> but it really it just hit me in the heart i don't know right. i just really like when i right. heard it i just thought that the, the chicken needed to be Right. celebrate them, you know <laughs> right right for sure <laughs> um i want to say hello to development of a void good to see you and um dom torgrosa good to see you i know you've been here a bit pindar i don't remember if i said hello to you i know you've been here hello to you of course uh Justine Casper, Kurt Casper are still hanging out here ray pierce uh glad to see you here uh, pookie ann uh and if anybody has any questions, definitely type them in the chat for Emily. Um, and the deal for real says, uh, Emily is one of those artists you can put on Aww. anytime after a stressful or busy day to just decompress and relax. Yeah, no, you. um, <laughs> you, you, you definitely have uh, not only uh, an amazing voice and, uh, your vocals is, I can't think of anybody that it has like that tone and and that style that you do um and and there is something just joyful and soothing uh, about everything that you do there really thank is. you <laughs> that's so kind of you thank you <laughs> Uh, well I, and the Dil for real said this earlier uh he he doesn't think you know how good you are and I'm kind of in the same uh boat with uh the deal for real i think you are uh, yeah. so so great <laughs> and i want to say hello to hugh caldwell good to see you um oh i know something i wanted to bring up because this was something i didn't realize till i did some digging around but you have merch um oh, yeah, and yeah. <laughs> i actually just ordered me one of the new designs um but i, I wonder to... who that was <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so um, you know, I am a, a, a I'm big on merch. I'm I'm big on um, collectibles, and and you know, I still buy CDs and I buy uh, Blu-rays, and I of course buy Funko Pops. So I always try to tell artists that they should do merch and they should do physical, uh, you know, um, media of some kind, whether it be vinyl or or CDs. Uh, so so very happy to see that you do have uh, all sorts of different shirts, uh, 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 all, uh, lots of styles. So um, how, how did all of that come about? And, uh, you know, who, who does the, the artwork? Well, my my bandmate from A Thousand Clocks, Harvey, mm -hmm. does the artwork. Because as I mentioned earlier, he's an artist by trade. Like he does the art for video games. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm just, I'm so lucky that I know him and I get to work with him. He helps me with a lot of my music videos as well. Just kind of tweaking them, putting the final touches on them. Right. Um, but yeah, he's designed like everything that you see. <laughs> there. Yeah. And the the so like the little logo of the hair, um, yeah, that I think is absolutely fantastic. Um, and I wanted one of those, but there wasn't one in a black, and I needed to get a uh, black shirt. 
<laughs> so, <Sorry>. but <laughs> look, look at look at all these fantastic designs uh, that you can order. Uh, so so cool. I ended up buying one of these in black. Um, uh, so cool. Uh, just I, again, I'm a huge fan of. of artists doing merch i'm going to drop the link for anybody that is interested in getting them an emily gray shirt now you've got a link tree but you don't have like a a, 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 a website or anything right is like a home base no i mean i started trying to sort a website out but i think to kind of pay to have a decent one right now right. i can't really afford it and you know all the things you have to juggle it's not like right top of my priority list unfortunately yeah no i got you yeah no that's the great <laughs> thing about uh link trees these days is that they can kind of serve as a hub i'm gonna drop your link tree it is in the description as well uh that's another thing that i think uh all artists should be doing is definitely uh, having the link tree with uh, all of their different social media on there and then links to spotify and merch and anything you got going on um Good to see you, Axiom. Um, and as far as themes, one thing that I've noticed is um, you, you, with, you've got Apocalypse, and then you've got this other song that we're going to play, um, uh, Edge of the End of the World. Um, is, 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 is that something that uh, you think about a lot and write about a lot as far as like, you know the end of everything or is it just kind of these two uh projects you know i hadn't really thought about that but um <laughs> when i i used to be this is a sore subject for me but when i was like in uni and before then i used to love the walking dead the, mm -hmm. <laughs> the tv right. show and i collect right. the comics i have all the comics right. so maybe on some level yeah um, and I actually, when I was in university, I also wrote my dissertation on The Walking Dead, on the comics, oh, awesome. on the novel. Um, so I guess I do kind of have like this weird fascination with the end of the world. In as much as like, I don't know, the idea that the, the rules that we invented disappear and it becomes life or death and everything starts to actually matter again. <laughs> do you know mm -hmm. what I mean? right um but the the edge of the end of the world we actually wrote this one during like the covid lockdown if right. i remember correctly so right. at that point it literally did feel to to everyone like we were on the edge of the end of the world so <laughs> right right what what i love about it too is that um it it and this kind of goes through i i think most of your music it 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 uh it's it's like this realizing that you're not in control and just kind of accepting things and then kind of realizing at least if I do my part and do mm -hmm. my best, you know, uh, it'll it'll be okay. And it, the thing is, is that if everybody worked that way and operated that way and did their part and did their best, everything would be fantastic. <laughs> it just doesn't Absolutely, work that way. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Um, but I love that, that it, it, it's basically without, without being preachy, it's a, a, uh, you know, like I said, a, a, a positive message about, Hey, what, what are we doing? What have we done? You know, uh, and you know, uh, hopefully it's not too late kind of thing. Um, mm -hmm. but yeah, fantastic song. So we're going to go to, oh, and this was your, um, your, your previous band um yeah. <laughs> that, uh the, the missing piece yeah um uh, which uh this was kind of like revising the the band to to do this song is that right uh so what happened was we were a band like way back when in high school right. and then we lost contact i moved to spain um and then more or less as soon as i moved here we started speaking again we revamped the first song we ever wrote and then we started writing some more songs right. together um and i think maybe we got we did a couple of covers as well we got a few songs right. in and then kind of stopped doing things but this is one of my favorite ones that that we did right okay 
Very cool. So this is um, Edge of the End of the World uh, from The Missing Piece. And here we go. We're on the edge of the end of the world, looking down into the void. And we beat the hands that fed us and saw our only home destroyed. We're on the edge of the end of the world, looking We beat the hands that fed us and saw our only home Fantastic song. I love how it builds and then I love how it comes back down. And then, like I said, I, I love the 
the way you you wrap it up with the you know sit and wait and hope it's not too late just so good yeah. Yeah. it's weird listening to that one now because to me my voice sounds really different actually <laughs> i mean it was only i guess four years ago now but <laughs> right no that one is a little bit different as far as your style um so totally um i mean that one um has more of like this um like late 80s kind of vibe going on with the vocals but uh yeah still fantastic um we are wrapping up here we do have one more song but um i did want to give you the floor if there was anything that you wanted to you know mention or anybody you wanted to shout out or you know anything that we didn't hit on that you want to you know bring up ah well Firstly, I want to thank you for inviting me on here. Um, it's really nice, like after sort of putting so many hours in over so many years mm -hmm. to actually have someone that, that wants to look at all of the things that I've done and, and show it to people. And so so thank you. Thank you so much for that. Because sometimes it's it can be like a very thankless <laughs> job. Yeah. And I, I've always kind of felt the desire to create music and I, I know that it's something that I, I need to do um, but in terms of like I want to make it my job and it's very difficult <laughs> right. but to have this kind of recognition and to have someone like I don't know it's it just it, it feels very good so so thank you <laughs> well thank you thank you for coming on and I, you know and I I realize that there is a lot of that uh, and I find artists that I love and I'm just like everybody needs to know about this so that's what I, I try to do is just try to uh, you know take that and, and, and share the love of whatever it is that um, you know I feel is definitely something people should be taking notice of and you you are definitely that you you are fantastic um, I uh, I love all the different things that you're doing, all the different directions. And uh, I hope you just keep going with it and never let that frustration of, like you said, the, the thanklessness of it, um, you know, get to you and wear you down. Uh, definitely keep going with it and just putting your heart into it and then sharing it out. And I think um, eventually it's, it's going to all catch up. So, yeah. I mean, uh, I love doing it. I think that's the most mm -hmm. important thing is that I right. I love doing it and I love seeing kind of my own progression right. because like I you know I started out years and years ago and the stuff that I'm doing now is kind of almost beyond my wildest dreams in in a right. lot of ways. So every time I make something it's exciting to me to kind of when it gets sent off to the producer like what's going to come right. back from it and then building the like the music video and the marketing around it is all part of the process. And I just, I don't know, I really enjoy it now. It's kind of like putting a puzzle together, you know? Right. Yeah. No, ex exactly. And there's so many different pieces and so many different yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, directions. So, yeah. No, that's that's really a, a good way to look at it, though. Um, and, and the fact that, you know, um, I think it shows in your music how much joy you get out of creating it and uh the whole process so um it, it, it definitely comes through so um i wanted to say hello i know a couple of people checked in here at the end uh son of snake great to see you and uh lady campion said she's been here uh lurking for some time uh great to see you lady campion uh kinger's music um thank you to everybody that has come by today um what i'm gonna do is um uh, we've got um another cover um uh, one of uh dolly parton's jolene um and i love the the version of it uh you you bring uh two two things come to mind when i'm listening to it um a little bit of ska to it uh i, I think kind of a little bit of maybe that early no doubt uh influence um and then also it it, it reminds me of the animals uh uh in, in many ways um like uh house of the rising sun yeah uh, yeah so it's a fantastic uh cover of jolene after that i am going to uh 
uh, share the video that we uh, field trip to. So you will get to see the uh, Echoes of Eternal Self uh, after the Jolene, but we're going to just go right into it um, uh, after that video. But um, thank you all for, for being here. Thank you so much, uh, Emily, for uh, being here. Um, and definitely anytime uh, you've got new music, uh, if I don't already know about it, let me know. <laughs> thank but you. I probably hear it on, uh, uh, on Spotify and, and send you a message like I did this past time. <laughs> <laughs> so well thank but, you uh, so much again for having me and thank you to everyone in the chat for all your kind words i really really appreciate you and enjoy the rest of your weekend i don't know what what time is it there <laughs> well where i am which i'm on the east coast um i'm actually um well i'm in ohio but eastern time so it's uh 5 32 p.m um saturday okay. and and there nice. it's what 10 30 or yeah, ten thirty on Saturday. Yeah. So Saturday is like more or less finished now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, you have a good night, and uh, everybody else have a great rest of your weekend. Um, love and positivity to everybody. Um, happy uh, Women's History Month. Uh, I've still got uh, a, a show Friday coming up and a show Saturday coming up. Um, all of the artists that I've featured on the show, um, I'll be playing some sort of video of yours on the Saturday show, Emily. Um, uh, probably something that I hadn't played uh, today. But uh, here we Thank go you. with Jolene. And then uh, stay tuned after that uh, for Echoes of the Eternal Self. Uh, thank you all.